For this video, I'll be showing you how to style an HTML select with a custom dropdown in a way that you will not compromise accessibility and still have a beautiful dropdown as you can see here. I have here a select tag with three options, one, two, and three. And on the CSS, I have a style for the body and that's what's making everything stay center as you can see on the right. I also set box size and border box for all elements on the page to make sure any size I set will take in consideration the padding and border of the element. And I will also extend this to include all pseudo elements as well. The first thing I need to do is wrap the select tag in a label to implicit associated with the select. I'll give it a class of custom select and include a label for the select as well. And this will not compromise the select accessibility. And I will show you how this implicit association can be beneficial as we go. Now let's start this label and I'll position it relative because I'll be positioning things absolute to it later on and I'll make it an inline block element with 14 pixels gray font size. Select tags are actually easy to style and it works like any other tag. If I inspect it, you can see that there's not much to it. So I'll make it 200 pixels wide, height minimum of 35 and give it a light blue background with a sky blue border. I removed the outline that browser normally sets on it. This is just a preference of mine. You can leave it if you want, especially if you want the user to know which elements has focus when they click the keyboard tab key, but you could also set it to a style of your liking. I'll add padding left and right only, give it a pointer cursor and distance it five pixels from the above text. One thing I don't like is this error because it is hard to deal with. So I'll just remove it by setting appearance none. And what you can also do is include prefixed appearance like dash webkit appearance, moss and ms. So it looks the same for all browsers. Now I'll be creating my own error indicator using the after pseudo element and I'll attach it to the labels wrapper since you can't add pseudo elements to the select tags. And this is another advantage of wrapping it in a label tag. It will have no content and size and I will use the old border trick to create triangles by making the border 5 pixels solid and transparent and I'll just add the color to the side I want and it will be the top so the arrow points down. If I change which border to color we can see the effect and it simply has padding so I'll make it inline block first and if I inspect this you can see that it is a square made of triangles borders whichever I give a color will show up as a triangle. Then I'll position the absolute 10 pixels from the right and bottom. I use bottom here because of the text since they are all inside the label tag. If the text wasn't the bottom, I would use top instead. Finally, I round it a little with border radius of 2 pixels so it's not too sharp on the top edges. And with that, the select looks styled to me. But the problem devs have is with the options drop down, which is unstylable since it belongs to the browser and how it looks will vary from browser to browser and OS to OS. I strongly suggest using select tag for any drop downs you build to take advantage of many accessibility features it comes with. But if you really want the drop down to look different, there is an easy way that will not break its accessibility features and I'll show you. So let's go to JavaScript where I first grab the label custom element and to demonstrate the implicit association with the select tag, I'll attach a change event listener to the label simply printing the value received and look what happens when I change the value. It works as if you attach the listener on a select tag itself, which I can do by grabbing the first child and we get the same result. Wrapping a field with a label like this has both the styling advantage and ease of work with in JavaScript without compromising accessibility. Although explicit association has better support by screen readers, but nothing you can fix by adding area attributes to the label itself. Now what I must do is prevent the dropdown from showing and the naive way is to prevent default on click, but actually the dropdown is shown on mouse down before the click. and it does not show when I click on it now. Note that I am only preventing it from showing on mouse down. There is still other ways you can trigger it, but more on that later. Next, I'll query the select tag and proceed to create our custom dropdown, which will be a UL tag, and I'll give it a class of selector options. UL tags are actually not for labels, but this will not affect your SEO since what search engines will read is your select tag when they reach your page. 
Then I'll go over to select children and I spread them here because children is not an array, but a node list. And I believe node lists are linked lists. And this is also I can call for each again, a preference of mine. Inside, I'll create list items and make their text content the options text content, which is the text inside the option tags you see here. And then I'll append it to the drop down and outside I'll append the drop down to the selector. And I need to fix here. I should be select children and not drop downs. Now, when I click, we see the drop down. So let's go ahead and style this now. I'll start by removing the list item dot with list style none. Override its padding with top and bottom five pixels. Again, I like the top and bottom space on my drop down and completely remove its default margins. I'll give it a dark blue background, round its corner, Z index it higher so it appears on top of other elements, making 96% wide so I'll have a 2% space on each side. Absolute position at 35 from the top so I can still see the label and you can style and position this however you want. It's up to you really. Now we'll start the list items and make them 35 pixels high, display flex so I can line text vertically centered, add some padding, make text white and pointer cursor as well. I'll also style its hover state and add a transition for it. If we try this now and it's looking nice, but nothing happens when I click on them. Remember the on change listener? Clicking on this item should trigger the same event. So I'll attach mouse down event to the items. And this is so I can stop it from propagating up and end up triggering the mouse down on the selector. And using the click won't do because click happens after the mouse down and it'll be too late. Then I'll set the select value with the option value that you can see right here. And I will do the same for the selector as well. And I'll remove the drop down so I can test it. If a comment out a select value set and click on the drop down items, notice that the value does not change. And this is why we also need to set on a select. And also in case someone is interacting with the select tag directly instead of the label tag. Now I need to dispatch a change event on both select and select the label by creating a new change event. And I'll bring up the console to see the logs. And when I click on the items, now we get the log, which is what I want. Another thing I want to handle is click out. When I click outside of the selector, I want to close the drop down as well. So I'll attach a click listener on the document and check if the selector contains the element where the click happens. If it does, it's because we click on somewhere either on the drop down or select. Else, it is safe to assume that a click happened outside and I'll just remove the drop down there. So another thing you need to consider is the behavior of the select tags on mobile device. So for example, I have here an iPhone simulator and when I click select, look at this drop down I get. It is different and Android have something else. And a lot of people prefer this. So you may want people to still get this when they click on the select tag, which is another reason you may want to use select tags in your custom drop downs. So what I can do is before I do all this, I check the window width and you may also need to check if, if it is actually a mobile device or if they are just resized the browser. And now when I am within mobile device width, I see the default, otherwise our custom drop down. If accessibility is concerned, let me show you what happens when I turn on my screen reader. Button, hinge two, select from number option three. You check mark two, one. You are check mark two, three. Three, so three, select from two, one. As you see here, when I navigate with a screen reader, I still get the default select, which is accessibility friendly, and the voiceover correctly lists the options and say the label tags of the selector, and that's why I only prevent the mouse down events. Join the Before Semicolon community by following the Twitter and Instagram page where I post code quiz, tips and tricks, and announce videos like this. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.